Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. Good day to all. I am Dr. Carmencita Padilla, one of the proponents of the newborn screening program in the Philippines. Join me in uncovering the wonderful story of newborn screening in our country. Together, let's zoom in on what makes newborn screening a comprehensive program for every Filipino here at Newborn Screening in Focus. In the first season, we had an extensive discussion about the birth of newborn screening program in the Philippines, the collection and management of samples, the factors that might affect NBS results, how the NSCs cope with the challenges brought about by the pandemic, and in detail, discussed the featured congenital disorders. In the second season, join us again as we dive deep into the systems of the Philippine newborn screening, study the partner organizations and their role in making NBS an outstanding program, and in detail, discuss another set of congenital disorders from our expanded newborn screening panel. This video series serves as an educational platform for our newborn screening coordinators, one in every 7,200 health facilities throughout the country. But just like all accomplished programs, the success of this video series relies on the consolidated effort of many sectors, the newborn screening centers, the satellite and continuity clinics, our partner organizations such as DOH, PhilHealth, the Centers for Human Genetic Services, and many more. We hope that with your continued support, we'll be able to achieve our ultimate mission of setting a world-class newborn screening program in the country. So without further ado, take a seat, get comfortable as you're in for quite an adventure here at Newborn Screening in Focus. Hello, um, ko si Pai Samorgia, isang nurse po, nurse one, Newborn Screening Clinic dito po sa Sambuanga City Medical Center. Dito po sa Sambuanga City Medical Center, ang pinaka-common po na nagpapositive is ang G6PD. So, so far po, yun po yung pinaka-common na sakit sa newborn screening dito po sa Sambuang kasi. Usually po, sa una, ang reaksyon ng mga magulang, natatakot sila. Yung iba nga, meron kami dito na iya kasi akala grabe talaga yung G6PD. Pero sa sa tamang pag-explain naman sa kanila, medyo nag-okay na sila. Ang importante po kasi na-explain na kailangan po talaga ng confirmatory test pag nag-positive sa G6PD. So dito na po sa amin, uh, in-explain na namin kung ano yung mga steps kung paano tayo sunod-sunod kung nagpositive man sa newborn screening ang baby sa G6PD. So, ang kasunod din yung isang confirmatory test para malaman. Para po sa mga anak po, mga magulang po na may mga anak na, mga G6, na may G6PD, so, um, ang payo po namin is huwag kayong matakot kasi sa una, as magulang, as a parent, yun po talaga ang kinakatakutan natin is akala natin may malalang sakit ang bata. Pero ito po yung kagandahan sa program natin ngayon sa newborn screening. Dahil nadedetect na siya pagkapanganak pa lang ng baby, is kaya po natin itong ma-follow up. Kumbaga, ano pa to siya, pwede pa to siyang maagapan as long as uh, sumunod tayo sa mga payo ng mga eksperto kung anong mga kailangan gawin. And wag po natin Hayaan na, kumbaga, is huwag natin pabayaan ng mga anak natin. Kailangan po talaga natin to na masunod po. Or kumbaga, sundin natin ang payo ng mga experto tungkol po nito. So, follow up lang po. Kung ano po yung advice namin, follow up lang po ang baby, baby, ang baby or ang bata. Kaya dapat Welcome to the 15th episode of Newborn Screening and Focus, where we talk about hemolytic crisis in glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency or G6PD deficiency and its long-term outcomes. A hemolytic crisis in G6PD deficiency is triggered by certain food and medications as discussed in last week's episode. To educate us more about the hemolytic crisis in G6PD deficiency and the other long-term outcomes, 
we invited back our two experts who have been studying this condition for a long time now. Once again, we have Dr. Maria Jasmine Gonzalez Ruiz. Dr. Jasmine is a pediatric hematologist and is currently the chair of the G6PD Committee of the Newborn Screening Reference Center. She conducts her practice at Fendel Mundo Medical Center and the Rizal Uptown Hospitals. We also invited again Dr. Jocelyn Rosita, a pediatric hematologist and co-chair of Dr. Jasmine in the G6PD Committee of the Newborn Screening Reference Center. She is the training officer of the Hematology Fellowship Program of the National Children's Hospital and attends at the Batangas Medical Center and Mary Mediatrics Medical Center. Dr. Jasmine and Dr. Joy, welcome back to Newborn Screening in Focus. Good afternoon, Dr. Menchit, and good afternoon to you also, Dr. Joy, and good afternoon to all our viewers. Good afternoon, Dr. Menchi. Happy to be with you again this session of Newborn Screening in Focus. You know, since G6PD deficiency is one of the most common in the panel of newborn screening, we would like to spend a lot of time in discussing this condition. So Dr. Jasmine, can you give us a very brief review of, um, of G6PD deficiency on what we discussed last week? Just a short one. Okay, so our last discussion centered on the importance of G6PD enzyme in the cellular protection against damage by oxidative radicals. And these uh, substances are what we call uh, the triggers. Uh, G6PD deficiency is an X-linked genetic disorder that can be passed on from an affected parent to their children. And this is the most common enzyme deficiency in the world. We have also discussed about the different triggers of foods, drugs, and okay. chemicals. And uh, all this can lead to the signs and symptoms of hemolytic crisis in patients with G6PD deficiency. And if not managed well, it can result to hospitalizations and long-term Thank you, Thank you, Dr. Jasmine. So Dr. Joy, for our audience, what is the meaning of a hemolytic crisis in G6PD deficiency? So hemolytic crisis is the sudden destruction of your red blood cells, leading to severe anemia. This is because these G6PD patients were exposed to the triggers. And when these patients were exposed to the triggers, there will be sudden destruction of your red blood cells. The signs and symptoms of this hemolytic crisis will be pallor. The patients will be noted to be pale. And then there, was, there will be yellowish discoloration of the skin and also the eyes. And then the mothers will note that there will also be tea-colored urine. And some of the patients will complain of back pains or abdominal pain. These are the signs of hemolytic crisis in a patient with G6PD deficiency. When you say there's a crisis, is it automatically life-threatening? Maybe that I'll, I'll reword the question. Yeah. If the, if the anemia is so severe, it could be life-threatening, but it is not always the case. So it will depend upon the exposure of this patient to the triggers that can uh, lead to the hemolysis. So it will depend. So not all are life-threatening, but it can be life-threatening if the anemia is so severe. So, so Dr. Jasmine, can it happen at any age? Since it is an inherited genetic disorder, a G6PD deficient baby will have the deficiency all throughout his or her life. And this is a myth because a lot of uh, parents out there believe that they can outgrow G6PD deficiency. It's so sad that uh, once you are G6PD deficient, you are deficient for life. Do not outgrow this condition. Just to give you an example, we have a 70 year old male who was admitted because of severe pneumonia. This pneumonia was associated with severe anemia together with jaundice. A complete hemolytic workup was done. And it turned out to be that among the laboratories uh, that they did for hemolytic workup, the patient had G6PD deficiency positivity at a low rate of less than 10% active. So according to the World Health Organization, 
we can classify our patients as class 1 to class 5 depending on the severity of the deficiency. For class 1 to 2, uh, they usually present with this hemolytic crisis. But for those patients that has mild or uh, very mild deficiency of around 60 to 90 percent deficient compared with the normal levels, then these patients can just present with mild symptoms. And most probably, this is the reason why a lot of patients doesn't know that they have just expedited deficiency until exposed to these different triggers. Yes, because you know, newborn screening was only in newborn screening for G6PD only started in the year 2000. So prior to 2000, you only know that you have G6PD deficiency when you go into a crisis and it's included yeah. in workup. Now, this is interesting because for 70 years, this particular patient never really had a critical episode of hemolysis. Dr. Jasmine uh, shared the story of a 70-year-old patient. So one can really grow old and not know one is G6PD deficiency until they have been exposed to a trigger. Now, since we are all pediatricians, let's talk about children. Have you had any experience with any of your patients presenting with hemolytic crisis? Hemolytic crisis? I'll start with Dr. Joy. Thank you, Dr. Ramenchi. So recently, I had a referral from a pediatrician. This is a six-year-old boy who is really a diagnosed case in a confirmed G6PD deficient patient. So the mother was very careful in giving him uh, the food. They tried to avoid it. But they went on a vacation in Palawan. And in Palawan, the aunt gave him a nut, probably a faba bean. That was what the mother told me that uh, triggered the hemolytic crisis in this patient. The patient suddenly developed severe anemia of seven grams. And then the patient also had uh, jaundice with icterisha, the yellowish discoloration of the eye, and also T-colored urine. When I requested for reticulocyte count, the reticulocyte count was high at 7%. So immediately the patient... Uh, I told the mother that we have to stop taking that uh, peanut or that nut that the, that the aunt gave the patient. And then we gave blood transfusion. And then after the blood transfusion, the patient improved and then went home. And then I already, I gave him a hematinic such as folic acid to help in the production of his red blood cells. So that is one patient I had with hemolytic crisis with G6PD. Okay. So, Dr. Joy, it's, it's interesting because you mentioned the fava beans. So, meron pala talaga tayong fava beans sa Pilipinas. And uh, the, 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 with the Mediterranean restaurants, you know, sprouting here in Manila in the provinces, the parents should be conscious about looking at the menu to find out if there are fava beans. And there are nuts. I, I, this is also a message to all. There are certain nuts that have uh, a mix of nuts. Uh, may peanut, may corn nut, and then actually when you read it, may fava bean. So, so in this particular case, um, I, I wonder if that is really fava bean. So my question now is, could it be another bean or was it really fava beans? And maybe that's a study for your group, no? Can we have a study to check all the different nuts in the Philippines and find out if any of this will cause hemolysis in a patient with with uh, with uh, G six PD deficiency? I just have a follow up question for for Doctor Joy. Um, and, and how is this patient now? Are we expecting long term sequelae or effects? Actually, in patients with G six PD, if uh, there is not if they are not exposed to the triggers, they can live a slow a long normal life. So the long-term complication could be probably if there is chronic hemolysis, and this chronic hemolysis can lead to sometimes gallstone formation or uh, slight splenomegaly, but it is not that common in a patient with G6PD deficiency. So the patient went home and it's okay, and then they're just trying to avoid the triggers or the nuts that, uh, that was given to the patient. And to add, Doctora, we are planning actually the G6PD deficiency, uh, the G6PD experts. We are planning to conduct a study regarding the list of this medication, uh, the list of this food 
that is included in our website and we will ask the patients or we can do a study if they are exposed to this food and if they develop hemolysis so probably that is one area of uh one area that we can study regarding our patients with G6PD deficiency. The patients who are already confirmed with G6PD deficiency, then we can ask them if they were exposed to this uh, food and if they develop hemolysis yeah. or hemolysis. Okay, so so maybe now we can show in the screen, no, some of the the list that the Dr. Joe and Dr. Jasmine has been they've been talking about. This list has been um is actually well uh, coordinated with the rest of the world. So in other words, in many parts of the world, there is this list that that, that we use as a guide for parents. So what we're saying is that if if they can be avoided, we avoid them. Uh, so and but the thing is. Just what is the minimum, what is the maximum? Maybe that's a challenge for our for our researchers right now. So let me go to Dr. Jasmine. So share share some of your patients, pediatric patients who turned out to have a hemolytic crisis. Doctor, let me share you a very interesting case. I was referred a baby girl who was admitted to our institution because of severe jaundice after the 24 hours of life. The bilirubin levels are so extremely high at around 40 milligrams per deciliter, which is actually a kernic virus level. So this patient was referred to a neonatologist who performed exchange transfusion. This is a procedure where you remove the patient's uh, own blood and replace it with a normal blood in order to decrease the level of bilirubins in the circulation. One week after the exchange transfusion procedure, the patient now developed neurologic complications of tremors and uh, jitteriness. And a very interesting background is the family history of this patient. Both the parents, the mother and the father, are positive for G6PD deficiency, meaning that the mom is a... Uh, uh, pure G6PD with both the X chromosomes affected and the father uh, a G6PD deficient. This family, uh, this uh, couple has an uh, another son, an elder blood brother who is also G6PD deficient. So this mother during her pregnancy, during this uh, second pregnancy, the baby girl uh, decided to do a food challenge. And so he took in and ate all the food in the trigger list, in our G6PD list, and turned out to be had a very bad course for her baby. So just a, a comment on this case, that if we are not able to uh, educate the parents well and uh, identify the presence of G deficiency in the neonatal period, the baby can have uh, brain damage secondary to the elevations of bilirubins and will develop long-term neurologic complications. On follow-up of this patient, now the patient has cerebral palsy, wheelchair-borne, and uh, with tissue disorder. Okay, so I think there are so many lessons to learn from these two um, sharing. No, number one, it's you can have a crisis whether you're young or old. Both presents a story of exposure to a trigger. Number two, it is genetic, as shown by the presentation of Dr. Jasmine, from the parents to to the brothers and uh, having the same condition. And maybe this is a time for our audience, uh, the health professionals, to take to have a review just exactly what is an X-linked disorder. And uh, number three is this is the first time that we're hearing that if you are not careful, there can be long-term sequelae. We heard from Dr. Joy earlier that. If management is prompt and uh, you're able, you may be able to reverse the uh, the symptoms, uh, the complications. But in the story of uh, Dr. Jasmine, 
there was an abuse. The person decided to take all the possible triggers and the body could not even tolerate the burden of all of the triggers. But this only shows that our newborn screening program is, is really important because we are trying to identify the children, the babies who are at risk for complications if they are given the trigger, if they have G6PD deficiency. Now, I just want to share with the group that, uh, you know, when we started um, newborn screening in for G6PD deficiency in the year 2000, there was one major observation that we we could not understand because in our neighboring countries, like let's say Hong Kong and Singapore and Malaysia and Indonesia, the presentation of G6PD deficiency at the newborn period is really more severe than ours in terms of the presentation of jaundice. So that was one question that bothered us here in the Philippines because our patients were going home. So the, the team of geneticists at NIH decided to undertake a study to resolve the question, do we have really G6PD among these patients? Because we can go into the genetics of it. So in other words, um, we are making a diagnosis using the enzyme, but, but there are actually other ways of making a diagnosis. And one thing we learned in that study is that the mutation of our patients in um, in the Philippines is actually different from the mutation in Singapore and Malaysia or or um or or Hong Kong. And that can probably explain why some of our cases are definitely milder. So that is now the there are many explanations for this, but as you can as you heard from our two speakers, once you have a case of a, of a G6PD deficiency, you should not take it for granted. As a matter of fact, I think in the earlier episode last uh, last week, Dr. Joy appealed to all professionals to to please track down all your patients with a with a newborn screening result that is positive because you have to do confirmation. So today's episode really shows that it can happen from birth, newborn, child, and then adulthood. So we're just happy that newborn screening is here in the Philippines. So. Um, once again, you know, the, the time is too too short for this conversation on, on G6PD deficiency. And I at this point, I'd like to request our, our panelists to have the special message. This time, I'll start with Dr. Joy. And what is your message to our viewers, to the midwives, nurses, and physicians who are the newborn screening coordinators of our newborn screening program? Tora again the appeal to do the newborn screening, the confirmatory testing, because we don't want to label this patient as, new, as G6PD deficient if they are not really G6PD deficient. We can see in this epi episode that hemolytic crisis can really happen. So it's really very important that confirmatory, confirmatory testing be done to our patients and also know all the triggers. If you have the triggers, uh, you can have a wallet or a... Um, you put all the, the list of the triggers in, with you anytime so that you will not be exposed to these triggers and so as not to develop hemolytic crisis. Thank you very much, Doctor, for this invitation again. Thank you, Dr. Joy. Dr. Jasmine? Um, uh, the spectrum of G6PD deficiency is very broad, depending on the severity of the deficiency, with majority of our patients remaining asymptomatic. So we would like to emphasize patient safety and therefore, I would like to thank Dr. Tara Menchit for this opportunity to share what G6PD is for public awareness. And since the best management is still avoidance of triggers and early recognition of the signs and symptoms of the hemolysis uh, for early intervention and appropriate management. And lastly, successful management is coupled with preventive genetics and genetic counseling. Well, thank you very much to our panelists, Dr. Jasmine and Dr. Joy, for such a lively discussion on the hemolytic crisis in G6PD deficiency. A hemolytic crisis can be the worst complication of this condition that can probably happen to our patient. And this will only manifest if triggers like food and drugs contraindicated for the G6PD deficient patients are ingested. G6PD deficiency is generally not life-threatening, and patients can generally live a normal life. To 
our virtual audience, please send us your comments, questions, or the list of topics that you want us to cover in our succeeding episodes. Email us at info at newbornscreening.ph or, or you may tweet us at newbornscreenph and also include the hashtag ENBSPH. We continue to improve our services as deemed necessary by the emerging challenges through an open dialogue about our experiences in newborn screening. It is our hope that through this series, this video series, we extend the sharing of knowledge with greater reach, empower our frontliners, improve connectivity with the newborn screening coordinators, and most importantly, provide unparalleled service to every family. That wraps up our discussion about G6PD deficiency and its long-term outcomes. We are excited to see you again next week as we discuss the role of LGUs in implementing expanded newborn screening. Nothing is more precious than seeing a child grow healthy and normal. Let us realize this through newborn screening. Newborn screening is a gift of life. Sunod sa batas Oh, I'm a baby Isa kang blessing